All right, this lesson, section 4.2, is on turning points, x-intercepts, and end behavior. Three things that we have to learn in this section, one of which you already know. It is very important that we understand what all three of these are, because we're going to use this knowledge throughout the whole chapter to help us solve polynomials. So let's first talk about x-intercepts, because you already know these, and it will be kind of easy. All right, so x-intercepts occur where the graph touches or crosses the x-axis. Okay, so x-intercepts, you already know this, touches or crosses x-axis. Okay, turning points. Let's talk about turning points in a minute. So turning points occur when we go from a decreasing to an increasing function or from an increasing to a decreasing function. So turning points, I'm going to label them TP. So it's when we go from increasing to decreasing or where we go from decreasing to increasing. They also occur at the maximum, minimums, or you also know these as peaks and valleys. And you also know these as the local or relative extrema. So that's what a turning point is. So when I look at the graph, I can obviously see that I've got several turning points here. I've got one at, um, let me, ch there we go. Let's change to a different color. I've got one here. So there's one, two, three, and four. So in this particular case, there are four turning points. And let's go back to the to the x-intercepts a minute um, and count how many we have there. We did those in red. One, two, three, four. So we had four x-intercepts. Okay. So those are the fairly easy concepts to understand. Now let's talk about end behavior. So let me get rid of all of this here and then we'll talk about end behavior. Because end behavior is extremely important. End behavior tells you what the parabola, I'm sorry, what the polynomial is doing on both ends. Okay. So first of all, it is a polynomial. That means the domain of the function is always all real numbers. That means it continues out here to negative infinity and it continues out here to positive infinity. It continues um, sometimes in the positive uh, y direction and sometimes in the negative y direction depending on these arrows. So this particular arrow right here on the left indicates that as these x values get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, these y values get larger and larger and larger. So we would say as negative x approached negative infinity, or we could just say as x approached negative infinity, that implies, implies in that direction, then f of x approaches positive infinity. And that, of course, is just for this particular case right here. Let's go over that again. So as the x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, in other words, it approaches negative infinity, then the y gets larger and larger and larger, and it approaches positive infinity. And I call that the left side of the graph. That's the left side, because it's on the left side of the y-axis. Now, so it's the left side. Now let's talk about the right side. So the right side is, of course, similar. As x gets larger and larger and larger and larger, 
it's approaching positive infinity. So as x approaches positive infinity, what is f of x doing? Remember, f of x is your y. Well, as x approaches positive infinity, this piece right here keeps going down and down and down and down. So it approaches negative infinity. So on the right-hand side of the graph, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x or y approaches negative infinity. And um, in the next lesson, the next video lesson, we're going to fill out this table and I'll show you how, how to write that. But for right now, this should just give you a good explanation of what n behavior is.